We're searching for hammers and carrying grandpa. That's right, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Slaughterhouse from Funko Games. In this cannibalistic kill fest, one player takes the role of the Sawyer family, owners of a nightmare farmstead and proverbial slaughterhouse. The other players take the role of unlucky trespassers, all trying to escape the murderous Sawyers. Over a series of rounds, the Sawyers hunt the trespassers who attempt to escape the farm. But in this game, there are no winners, only survivors. Setup begins with the house boards placed in the middle of the play area, aligned the same way. For your first game, ignore the achievement cards in the separate bag. These are covered in detail on page 15 of the rulebook. House boards have an upstairs and a downstairs, and each board is divided by dotted lines into spaces. The house itself is also divided into rooms, some of which have one space, others have multiple spaces. Separately shuffle and place the Desperation and Injury decks face down along with a supply of game tokens. Next, select a scenario card for the game. Read the introduction out loud and place the card red side up near the boards. If this is your first game, choose the A, Who Will Survive scenario. Select which player will take the role of the Sawyer family and give them the chainsaw panic meter and the three Sawyer boards with their standard side up. If there are three trespasser players, choose one Sawyer board to flip to its brutal side. In the case of four trespassers, flip all three to their brutal side. The Sawyer family player then sets a red cube on the start space of the panic meter and the highest space of each Sawyer board. Then takes the three Sawyer family figures along with the grandpa mover, placing the old man figure, not to be confused with grandpa, who is a different old man, in the pantry shuffles the Sawyer deck and sets it face down, then draws four cards to form their starting hand. Takes the four fear tokens and four random horror tiles. They look at the horror tiles and place them face down in any named room of their choice except the foyer, with a max of one tile per room. Next, the trespassers each choose a color and take the matching board, mover placed in the foyer, hidden token, and cube set on the four space of their board. In the case of a game with only one trespasser player, they play two trespassers, taking two of each material. They then shuffle the personal item cards and reveal six. Each player chooses one to keep and all others are returned to the box. Set up the scenario by taking the item deck from the freezer box, then follow the item card setup instructions on the scenario card, returning any unused items to the game box. Then, shuffle the item deck and split in half, setting each on the item deck space of each house board. Shuffle the five vehicle cards according to the scenario card and place one face down on each vehicle space of the downstairs board. Finally, follow the token setup on the scenario card and return any extra tokens to the box. Flip the scenario card over and read the game objectives to begin the game. Gameplay occurs in rounds, each divided into turns beginning with the trespassers. Then the Sawyer player takes a turn for each member of their family on the board. First up, the trespasser turns. These turns can be taken in any order of the player's choosing, but a turn must be complete before another player can begin. On their turn, the active player may take up to four actions, and they can take the same action multiple times, tracking their usage with the cube on their board. Actions include move, Run, search, or swap. Let's look at each. Move, where the active player moves their mover to an adjacent space. Players can move orthogonally across dotted lines or through doors, but not diagonally. Whenever a player passes through a door, they take a noise token. More on these shortly. Run, this allows the player to move two spaces. However, they automatically incur a penalty of one noise token, plus one more for each door they move through. If a run is interrupted by an attack, the movement immediately ends. Search. If the trespasser is in a space with a search symbol, they roll two of the three bone dice. Bone dice have either a blank side, a single success, or a two success side. For each success rolled, reveal the top card of the item deck on their current board. They then choose one of the revealed items and bury the rest. Burying cards means putting them on the bottom of that deck, as there are no discard piles in this game. 
Trespassers can carry up to four items, but personal items do not apply to this limit. Note that whenever a trespasser searches, the Sawyer player places a searched token over the symbol. If all the searched tokens have been placed, the Sawyer player uses one of the placed tokens to cover the space. Swap. The active player chooses one trespasser, living or dead, on their space and may give or take any number of item cards from them as long as either player does not exceed their limit. Once the active trespasser has taken up to the four actions, they move their cube to the zero space to show their turn is complete. If they have any noise tokens in front of them, they roll two dice and discard one token for each success. Any remaining tokens are flipped to their fear side, then given to the Sawyer player. Additionally, if the trespasser has ended their turn in a room with a hide symbol and there are no Sawyers in the room, the trespasser is considered hidden. Their mover is replaced with the hidden token. Hidden trespassers cannot be attacked or carried by the Sawyers. On their next turn, their mover returns to the space. Once all trespasser players have completed their turns, they reset their cubes to four and the Sawyer player's turn begins. At the start of their turn, the Sawyer player draws cards from the Sawyer deck based on the number below the cube on the panic meter. They may also draw additional cards by spending two fear tokens per card. They then take a turn with each of the Sawyer members on the board. At the start of the game, only the old man will take a turn, but as the panic meter rises, the other Sawyers will join the fray. The player may choose the order in which to resolve the family member's turns, but Grandpa never takes a turn. Wah, wah. On a Sawyer's turn, they may take a number of actions based on their cube on their card. These actions can be taken multiple times in any order and include move, hunt, and attack or other action. Move. Y'all, this is pretty simple, and it follows the same rules as a trespasser move action. However, Sawyers don't make noise, reveal horror tiles, or vehicle cards. And because Grandpa cannot move on his own, any Sawyer may carry him when they take the move action. Players can only carry one mover or token at a time. Hunt. When in a space with a hidden token, the Sawyer player can hunt to roll one die. If they get at least one success, the trespasser is no longer hidden. Attack or other action. The Sawyers have unique actions on their cards, which include an attack option, which allows them to attack a trespasser in their space. For each success rolled, they reveal a card from the top of the injury deck, then choose one to give to the trespasser, burying the rest. Injury cards provide an immediate penalty and a trespasser cannot have two of the same type of injury. However, once a player receives one of each type, they have been killed. They lay their mover down, take no further turns, and their items stay on the body. Dead trespassers cannot be carried. This also makes the panic meter raise by one. And so it is. Once all the Sawyer players have resolved their turn, a new round begins. Let's look at some of the other important game mechanics. Windows and stairs. Some cards or abilities allow players to travel through windows. If they move through a window on the upstairs board, they jump down to any space on the downstairs board between the two window symbols on that side of the house. Spaces with stairs are noisy, providing a noise token when moved on, and trespassers cannot run on them. But they're adjacent to each other on the separate boards, allowing players to traverse the floors. Panic meter. Various game effects raise the panic, moving the cube one space to the right. As the panic rises, the label above each new space resolves immediately, either allowing each trespasser to draw a desperation card, which provides a powerful one-time ability and does not require an action, or allowing the placement of a Sawyer family member on the start space listed on their board. Attacking Sawyers. Some desperation cards and item cards allow a trespasser to attack a Sawyer in their space. They roll the dice listed and for each success, the Sawyer loses an action on their next turn, tracked by moving the cube on their board to a minimum of one action. Sawyer cards. These can be played in one of two ways, during a trespasser's turn as a reaction or during a Sawyer's turn for the effect in the red bar at the bottom of the card. In either case, they bury the card after. Vehicles, the main way of escape. When a trespasser ends their movement on a space with a face down vehicle card, they reveal it. Some also have an immediate effect when revealed. Horror tiles, 
Whenever a trespasser enters a space or room with a face-down horror tile, their move ends immediately and they reveal it, resolving its effect. Fire. When any Sawyer or trespasser starts their turn in a space with fire, roll two dice. Sawyers lose actions per success, and trespassers draw injury cards and apply one if possible. Grandpa. Whenever a trespasser enters a space with Grandpa, their movement ends and the Sawyer player rolls one die to attack them. Rounds continue with Sawyers hunting and trespassers fleeing until one of two end game conditions are met. If all the trespassers have been killed, the game ends. If all of the trespassers remaining have escaped, the game ends. There are no winners, only survivors. And that's the bleak and brutal basics of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Slaughterhouse. I'm Amy Vorpal, this is Good Time Society, and you are gonna make a nice skin suit someday. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and come on back for more great games and good times. Bye!